Today on Topics in Radiography, we're going to be critiquing an odontoid x-ray. All right, guys, we're going to look at a few odontoid images today. And here's a halfway decent one, but a little bit of positioning correction needed. If you look here, we're just looking at the dens right here. I don't know why I'm using pink slash purple, but I guess it stands out well on this image. Uh, so looking at this, we have the incisors uh, superimposing the tip of the dens. You can see here, it's kind of subtle. That is the base of the skull, the occipital bone. So if I toggle this on and off, you can kind of see what I'm looking at here. We've got a little bit of room to play with at the back of the skull. Now, I have two options for getting through the buck teeth here. I can, well, actually three. I can either lift the chin up because these teeth are anterior to the dens. I can angle the tube cephalic. And when you do that, angulation of these tube in a cephalic direction means that anything closer to the tube, which is the teeth when we compare uh, its location to the dens, anything closer to the tube will be uh, presented in the direction of the tube angulation. So if I angle the tube up, the teeth will move up. Just subtle, I'd say five degrees or less to, to fix this one. All right, here we go. I'm gonna add a layer here. All right, a lot of stuff going on here. So here's our dens, this is what we're interested in. Here's the incisors. So the fact that these are not lined up vertically with the middle of the dens tells me there is rotation. So we have rotation, if this is hung correctly, rotation to the patient's left. We have the base of the skull superimposing the dens now. So. This is kind of the opposite error. Let me get rid of this for a sec. So what we want to do is either bring the chin down, which will do two things. It brings the incisors down a little bit. Hopefully you can get them, you know, at this level. It will bring the base of the skull up so that it is not superimposing the tip of the dens. And then you should probably rotate the head a little bit to the right. Uh, the only reason that we say we need to rotate or have it, you know, strictly AP is because the distance between the dens and the lateral masses there needs to be symmetrical. Oops, I even messed up that last one. You can tell it's, it's a little bit wider on this side. Let's go look at some positioning on another one. Now, first of all, shame on you for collimation here. I'm going to zoom way in, though. I don't even know. Maybe this was supposed to be a mandible view. Even still, you don't need the whole orbit if you're shooting a mandible. Shame, shame, shame. So rotation-wise... Here's the incisors where they meet. It's not too far off from the middle of the dens. So I'm gonna say that doesn't need to be rotated. However, if you notice, take the midline of the chin, compare that to the nasal bone, connect a straight line, you've got quite a bit of tilt. So hopefully that can be corrected on the repeat. Let's say the patient couldn't move we would need to angle the tube cephalic again. The teeth are closer to the tube. We want to move them up, so we angle up. So bring your tilt line perpendicular if the patient can move, or just angle the tube up a little bit. 
Um, you know, within a trauma situation, if they can open their mouth, great. You might not be able to have them straighten out their neck or anything. So it depends on the scenario, but obviously there's room for improvement here. All right, let's look at one more quick one. Let's see, where did it go? Well, let's look at a couple. That one's just super ugly. Um, I don't know what they were going for here, but you can barely see it. I'm guessing that's about where it's at. So huge. I mean, you can see the foramen magnum here. That's a huge, huge uh, misangulation right there. I think this was the same. Is it the same patient as the last one? So this one you would need to angle. Again, if you had to angle the tube, you want the teeth, which is closer to the tube, to come down. So you would angle caudally. I'm, I'm guessing 10 to 15 degrees for this one. That's a pretty steep angle. Or you could drop the chin to bring those down and then elevate the base of the skull here. So like I said, out of all of the examples I've presented, this is probably the best one. Um, this is more of kind of a, a speed critique here, but these are the things you should be looking for when doing your odontoid uh, QC. And again, you're looking at a low resolution monitor after your exams. This should be a quick glance. You should be able to look and say, oh, you know, within a couple seconds, already identify, hey, these teeth are superimposing the dens there. I need to possibly repeat or what I didn't get to uh, previously with the third option besides angling the tube or lifting the patient's chin is do that Fuchs view. But that's a whole other video. I hope this has been helpful to you. If so, please let me know in the comments below and make sure you're subscribed if you like this content and would like to see more.